Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane. It's early in the morning and it's coffee time. And this video today is concerned with lathe dials, larger, easy to read lathe dials. There's going to be a lot of talking. There'll be uh, 3D printing. Uh, so this is just a fair warning for you people that do not like that kind of content. So uh, move right on to the second part of this video if you don't, don't want to hear a lot of talking and uh, about why I am doing this. So... Uh, Stand by. Some of this content was covered a long time ago in tips number 89 where I mused on the size of lathe dials. Just a little bit of repetition here, but you also could go back to watch that video if you were so inclined. Now take a look at these dials here. This is a South Bend lathe dial, a real old one. And these are Atlas lathe dials, also real old ones from the older model, 10 and 12 inch. But these are difficult to read. Now, not for a 15-year-old boy in a machine shop class, and South Bend lathes were often used in training. But South Bend, many years ago, came out with larger dials and satin chrome dials because of the complaints and because of the old men that might be using them. They just can't uh, read these little dials. And as they get kind of corroded and rusty like this Atlas dial, that's really impossible to read. And especially as your eyes age and you're looking through cataracts. Now you tell me, which dials are easier to read here? These large plastic 3D printed dials or the little old one inch dial here on the South Bend lathe? Now this video again concerns 3D printing. These were 3D printing and it's a collaboration. A collaboration between myself and Kevin Ciampi from the Garden State of New Jersey who has helped me in other uh, videos and uh, has continued to help and he did all of the uh, the uh, CAD work on this and sent me the file. So I'll talk more about him later, but I thank him very much for the help. I could not have done this by myself. I do know how to 3D print, but I am not a CAD person. F Fusion 360 or whatever it is that uh, Autodesk Inventor, rather, is what Kevin uses. So thanks, Kevin. Let's move on here now. Now I'm standing in front of my Logan lathe and a couple of years ago I made videos and here they are if you have not seen them and have any interest at all in watching them but I did make larger lathe dials at that time for the Logan lathe this is the original one and this is larger than what you see on uh, the Atlas lathe or what I showed you there a few minutes ago and I increased it to this size and this was the largest size and that's aluminum and it's machined it is not plastic but that was the largest size that I could uh, put on this machine because there is interference here. So even at that point it strikes. I did not deal with compound dials in today's video or a long time ago because most of our uh, problems here and our, our settings on a lathe are with the crossfeed dials. I'm going to talk about the dials on several different lathes here, so move ahead if this is too boring for you, but this is my 12-inch Atlas Craftsman lathe, and it does have larger dials. Here again is the older dials that some of you may have on 10 and 12-inch uh, lathes made in the uh, 30s, 40s, uh, 50s, and maybe even early 60s. And again, that's about one inch, whereas these dials are about one and three quarter inch not that hard to read other than they are not satin chrome and they are not direct reading which I'm going to address here in a minute so this is the lathe that these dials are going to fit and I'm going to get into that in great detail here but let me talk a little bit about uh, direct and indirect reading dials and I'm going to step over to the closing 12 inch lathe right now these closing dials are wonderful. They are two and a half inch in diameter, and that is the diameter of the dials that I'm making for the Atlas lathe. Remember, Atlas and closing are really one and the same company, or were in their heyday. I'm not so sure right now. But not only are these dials large and easy to read, but they're also satin chrome, and that also uh, facilitates the reading of the dials. Now let me talk about direct and indirect reading dials. And these are direct reading. 
I have to digress a little bit now. Again, this is the South Bend compound. This is Atlas. But all of the screws used in every brand that I've ever seen, including the Clausing and the Hardridge and, a few, and the Logan that I have here in my own uh, workshop, are 10 threads per inch. 10 threads per inch. Now what's the significance of that? The significance is that that means that the pitch is 100 thousandths or one tenth of an inch. Therefore for each revolution, full revolution, the, the tool is going to move 100 thousandths. That's an important concept to remember now in what I'm uh, talking about. At this point in the video I need to try to explain the difference between direct and indirect reading dials and this again is the Atlas lathe and I've set the cross feed here at zero and I have also in place a dial indicator set to zero. So just for illustration here I'm going to turn the uh, cross slide one full dial which is one hundred thousandths. So looking up at the dial indicator you can see that I have advanced the, the indicator or the tool into the work by one hundred thousandths. But that's uh, by doing so it actually removes two hundred thousandths from the work if I was actually cutting a, a, a piece of steel. So it moves in 100, takes off 200. I call that indirect. Now some people may call it radius reading or diameter reading or have other terms for it, but that's the terminology that I'm using. Now let's go over to the closing and see a direct reading dial. At the closing now, these are direct reading dials. So this dial if I have a turn at one full revolution as uh, two hundred thousandths and also have an indicator in place here. So uh, while just watching the indicator here I'm going to advance a half a revolution down here on the cross feed which is one hundred thousandths and watch what happens on the indicator. I went a little bit past. So I've only moved fifty thousandths. See, half of a revolution here. Therefore, since I moved it 100 thousandths, it's going to take off 100 thousandths. It moved in actually only 50 thousandths. Is that clear as mud? So, in a review, since all lathes are using 10, th 10 threads per inch on uh, the screw, you're going to see a difference here on the dials where some of the dials have the graduations real close together, like this one and it reads up to two hundred thousandths and the other they're a little bit farther apart and it only goes to one hundred thousandths. So that's how you can quickly determine on your machine whether they're direct or indirect just by how close together the graduations are or how many thousandths uh, are uh, indicated here, one hundred or two hundred. Let me take you over to the hardinge lathe and show you something interesting on that machine. Now remember this little hardinge lathe is called a speed lathe or a second operation lathe so it has no tail stock. It has no carriage really. So we have two dials here and these are nice dials because they are plastic. They're easy to read. They're white with uh, black numerals and, and uh, lines on them. Very easy to read. But the one on the cross feed here is direct reading. Notice it goes to two hundred thousandths. However, the dial here on what I'm going to call the compound is uh, indirect, only 100 graduations, because in fact here we use the, we need uh, the the uh, 100 thousandths. In other words, if if I feed it in, and this is longitudinal feed, if I feed it in 100 thousandths, I want it to actually move 100 thousandths. Where on the the cross slide we're taking a certain amount of material off of each side of the work so that's why they built this lathe with two different uh, dials even though the screws are both 10 threads per inch. So I bloviated quite enough now on the difference between direct and indirect and 100 and 200 uh, graduation dials because in fact for the Atlas lathe, the Craftsman lathe, I intend to make dials 
both 100 and 200 graduations. So now we're actually going to get on with the video. Thanks for sticking with me if you have. Back at the Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe, I'm going to take this apart now to show you how I actually went about this. And I've already loosened up this uh, nut here. So that has to come off as well as the Zamac uh, handle. And then there's a key. If I can get that out. Alright, I got the key loosened up. Then there's a lock washer. The star type. That seems kind of crude. Now this is a fine thread. That takes a minute or two to get off. Now that's really all you need to take apart. Now there's a little brass pin here. Don't lose that. And this can be set aside. I'm not going to throw this away. This will be attached to the lathe here for the next owner. But the diameter right here, which is three quarters of an inch, has to fit into the new dial. One other thing that I needed to do was to enlarge the diameter of this piece with a new zero mark. So I made it out of aluminum, but of course it could be printed, but this probably was made in uh, 15 minutes. Printing this would take a lot longer because I'd have to have Kevin or somebody do the, the actual work for me, and then print it out would take a couple hours, so it was much faster to make this just out of uh, aluminum. And I then will put it on here and I had a real nice fit. I'm not going to put it on now, but a nice press fit where I could just tap it into place. It could be held on there with Loctite or little set screws as well. But I lucked out here and I worked accurately enough so that I can uh, tap it on with a little uh, lead hammer when I'm ready. And that will give me a uh, reference point. See, there's a zero mark. Now let's talk about printing these. You may recall that some time ago Kevin Ciampi contacted me and I made a video of the dials. He, he made another one of these that was 3D printed. This is the steel one, but there's a 3D printed one that he designed, I think taking it off of this. And he uh, sent me information on that and we printed out, or I printed out, uh, several dials from uh, his... Uh, uh, files and we did them he designed them several different ways and these are kind of hard to read but some of them with raised dials and some of them with uh, recessed dials like this so we were experimenting and eventually he came up with the perfect uh, solution and size and, and the depth and all of that and it was a great improvement over what I'm showing you right here. There's one that's raised, but you can't read the graduations at all. So let me show you some of the ones now that I 3D printed. There were several different trials here, and he made various depths. Or This is one of the with raised numbers and graduations. Can you see that? But there was no good way. This is hard to read. There's no good way to ink this other than maybe to put it on a stamp pad, but I think that would wear off. So decided not to use this, although it amazed me that the 3D printer was able to do that. But you can see it isn't real easy to read. So pretty much scrapped that idea and came up with the recessed. And that, those are filled with, I'm going to talk about how I colored those here in a minute, but don't you agree that that is very, very easy to read? And that's the 100, and there's the 200. Also very, very easy to read. That one was 30% uh, fill, so I experimented with that. But it took a long time to print these out. That one was 20%, and I didn't mark them all, but eventually decided uh, that the amount of, uh, of fill wasn't that important. Uh, 20 or 30 percent is is fine. Now he also printed the hole and we did several different versions of that even trying to print the thread but that didn't work out so it's just a straight hole and I, I tapped it 832 I forgot what size that was but that's how it printed out 
tapped at 832 and I'll be using these little thumb screws along with a little brass rod that'll press up against that piece so it can be loosened and then locked. I didn't like this green filament at all and this is PLA not ABS. This is the 200 graduation raised. It's amazing how that printed out but I, again I'm not going to use it. 